Hello everyone. Uh, today we are um, uh, welcome, should I say, first of all, to the K Johnson G Helping You Build a Better Business webinar series, where we're looking at a number of corporate finance uh, topics. Uh, today we shall be looking at our uh, K Johnson G Owner Managed Business exit map. There is lots of talk by lots of people some of whom should know better about uh, exit planning for uh, businesses. And needless to say, a number of the, the less uh, scrupulous, let's say, uh, will promise the earth as regards what is available, uh, the options available, and the likelihood of a successful exit uh, for your business. Uh, the, what we will run through here are the options that actually apply, the very high level uh, considerations around each that drive each. Um, and although we have titled this the owner managed business exit map, the principles apply to all types of business, certainly businesses, sorry, certainly family owned businesses. Um, and uh, we'll run through the following schematic to go through this. What we will not cover is a uh, measured uh, um, uh, wind up, winding up of uh, your business. So a member's voluntary liquidation of the business to uh, terminate the business's activities. Um, we're talking here of an exit that involves a continuation of the business. I'll just move my face out of the way of this schematic. There we are. Uh, so um, where we start is at the top of this flow chart. And the question is, is there genuine trade type interest in your business? This is where uh, there is a lot of hard selling done by uh, business brokers who um, promise the earth, as I mentioned earlier, and don't necessarily deliver. Um, some statistics um, uh, that were published as part of um, a stock market listing of one of the largest business broking organizations in the country showed that somewhere around 7% of the businesses that they took on to sell were actually sold. So looking at it more negatively, 93% of the businesses they signed up to sell were not in fact sold by them. And that gives some indication of, uh, without taking those figures too literally, um, that that does give some indication of um, what we're up against as regards a successful trade type sale. Trade sale just meaning selling your business to another uh, business, company, group, national or international, who are typically in the same sector or a connected one, but not always. So is, if there is a genuine trade interest, um, the, the answer to that question is yes, then trade sale is a possibility and trade sale will result, generally speaking, in a good, at least reasonable price being achieved and will involve all or most of the consideration you receive being paid at completion or upfront. What, however, if there is not uh, a genuine interest in the trade sale? Here we move over to this side of the slide and we have to look at two particular uh, areas which are separate but very related. First is how involved is the owner or are the owners of the business in the business? If the owner of a business is involved on a day-to-day -day basis and is key to the running of the business, it will obviously be very difficult to sell the business because to put it bluntly, the business owner will be trousering some cash on a sale and may not be seen or thought to be as incentivized as he was before 
to run the business. Other side of the same coin is as regards the other management. Are the other non shareholding management team members able to run the business? So if the answer to the questions is the other man are the other management strong and or is the owner involvement low is no then you're heading towards a dead end question then becomes if that is the case are you willing to genuinely fix it the good news is it's fixable the bad news is it's not generally fixable in a matter of weeks and therefore it takes some planning and organization to allow us to get to a position where what we're saying is that the owner's involvement is not crucial and very, very high to the business's operation, and the other members of the management team are actually strong enough to run the business. If those are the case, either because you fixed them or because it is the case anyway, then the question becomes, um, is how strong is the growth story for the business? If it's reason realistic to say that the business has a strong growth story and you as you look over the next three years and beyond that the business has good opportunities and can show strong growth then you're into the area here of a, a potential uh, potentially into this area here of equity backed funding from venture capital or private equity funders generally backing the management in the business through a management buyout, the management coming into the business if that needs to ha needs to happen, a management buy-in or MBI, or a combination of the two, generally known as a BIMBO, uh, a buy-in management buyout. So some combination of management buying the business backed by equity is uh, generally possible, but only if there is a strong growth story. The reason being that equity investors do not look for returns similar to debt providers. They look for equity returns. As a very general rule of thumb, a private equity type investor is looking to put an amount of money into the business on day one, receive a certain amount of return as they go, and then make an exit from the business, which can be selling to another private equity player or a trade sale at some point in the future and they are looking over a three to five year period to treble their money. They, to do so, there needs to be a growth story, a growth uh, in the business that they can be part of as an investor. Not too many businesses uh, satisfy those criteria. So if this growth story is decent, uh, stable, the business is stable, it's, it's doing, does what, doing well, but it's not that strong growth story, high growth story we've just described, then we're looking at a structured buyout of some sort. Now a structured buyout involves, as uh, the other type, uh, the, the equity funders, funded deals would, 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 uh, would be the case for the equity funded deals as well, uh, would involve debt being used as part of the funding to uh, pay the vendor or seller of the business. So it would typically involve debt funding, but in this scenario, where there isn't the strong growth and equity funding is not a realistic option, debt funding is the only external finance that is possible. The other two elements there then are deferred terms, where the seller of the business is basically being paid over a period of time, paid an element of the consideration, over a period of time. Now that deferred consideration can be straight deferred. You're owed the money. You receive it at a certain, at certain agreed time points in the future. Or it can partly be what's termed an earn out based on the future performance of the business. In other words, if the business performs strongly, you'll either get more consideration or get the consideration quicker. But if the business does not perform strongly, in the future or as expected more correctly in the future you may not earn that earn out at all and it's always worthwhile bearing in mind that 
if an earnout based on future performance is part of the consideration for the business, you as a business owner and the potential seller of the business should see that earnout as the icing on the cake rather than the sponge in the cake. It has to be the extra piece that is achieved rather than the core because of the risks involved as a generalization. So these types of deals uh, we call uh, structured buyouts. So it's a buyout of the business by management, uh, typically uh, using these, uh, these forms of funding, elements of the funding. And uh, this will also cover an increasingly interesting and popular uh, approach, which is an employee-backed buyout of the business. That is essentially a form of a structured buyout where a trust is put in place, holding shares on behalf of the employees and employees, all employees in the business who meet agreed criteria are beneficiaries of the trust. And this is seen as an important area and increasingly so because it is believed and the evidence indicates that owner managed businesses, uh, employee owned businesses, I do, do apologize, um, perform uh, better than others do. And uh, secondly, there are tax planning incentives in place, both for the employees and for the seller of a business to an employee trust um, to make this more attractive. So an interesting area that's worth considering. Those three trade sale, buyout, management buyouts, buy-ins and structured buyouts are the broadly the three options that you have as regards a sale of your business. If for some, for the reasons we talked about earlier, the criteria cannot be met to achieve those, the realistic position, despite what some may say, is you will hit a dead end. And what we are keen to do, obviously, is work with clients to make sure that whichever of these three routes, and it could be more than one that's possible, of course, is achieved by clients as painlessly and as effectively as possible. Thank you uh, very much uh, indeed for uh, listening. Um, I hope uh, you found that uh, enjoyable. Um, the pressing too many buttons on the screen. Um, hope you found that enjoyable and useful and uh, take care.